Welcome to another post-processing tutorial. I didn't have time to record another vlog the last weeks, but we had a lot of fresh snow in parts of Germany, so I hope to get out soon and take some photos and also share some of the snowy landscapes with you. But till then, I have to stick with Photoshop here. So today's topic are selective image transformations, which I use a lot in my post-processing to change the proportions of an image or to do selective perspective adjustments. I've actually done a tutorial on them already a few years ago here on YouTube, but the audio quality in that video was so bad that I decided to give it an update. So here's an image I photographed two years ago in New Zealand. It shows the Redwoods area in Rotorua and I had this beautiful pond here with those intense blue colors. And this is already the processed version where I applied those uh, transformations I was talking about. And yeah, I'm gonna show you on this example why and how I do them. So let's go to a raw file. So this is actually a raw file of that day. And if we look at the difference here, you see in this image, I have this river flowing right through the middle. And this side and this side, they're relatively symmetric. And this is also what I liked about the scene, but the natural scene that day wasn't quite as symmetric. So you see here, this part, this triangle shape is bigger than this side and the river is not going directly through the middle. And what I could do now, I could crop in a bit to the sides, but then I would lose a little bit here of those bushes and ferns. And I don't want to do that. What I want to do instead, I want to change the proportions. So making this part of the image uh, a little smaller or and this part of yeah on the right side I want to stretch it so basically moving the river more to the middle and yeah, doing this is very simple so normally you know Control T brings up the transformation tool and you can do uh, global transformations to the whole image but as I said we're gonna do selective transformations so I'm gonna duplicate and this is important as I show you later, never do those transformations on the original layer. Always do a copy and then do them on the copy. And this will make sense in a few minutes, but first I'll do the transformations. So as I said, I want to shrink this side a bit. So I make a selection of this part of the image. Control T brings up the transformation tool and then I pull in here. And what I usually do with those selective transformations, I don't go too far. So if I go too far, I basically butcher the pixels in the image and I'm always after a good quality in my photos. And if I do too many transformations, the details get lost and it doesn't look good, especially when I stretch the other side. So don't go too far here. So I think going in like this is enough. Press enter. Control D deselects the image. And before I go on now and show you the other side, let's first hide the layer behind here. And now I want to show you something which is very important to note. If I zoom in here and I'm zooming in very far and going to this area where I did um, the stretching. So let's see where this was actually. Yeah was around here. So if you go in very closely, I'm going to 300, 400% now. So you can notice, you see a very fine line going down this area. This is where the border was, where the two parts of the image are connected. And this is hardly, you can hardly notice it, but sometimes this line will be even more. And you have to be very careful about this because if you do a lot of image transformations, you are getting those lines on all the borders. And yeah, you, it's, it's a hard work to clone them out. So that's why I kept the layer beneath. And this line actually is partly transparent area. And if I show the layer beneath, it's gone magically. <laughs> so. For this reason, always keep the layer beneath, do your image transformations on the top layer and later we'll just merge it down and you'll never have the problem with those lines. And this is very important. In my 
longer tutorials. I always do it that way. I'm not sure if I mentioned this line, but the workflow is always duplicate, then do the transformations and we'll just continue with the other side. But first, let's move this over. Okay, so again, now I select this part of the image, which I want to stretch, Control T, and I stretch it just to the edges. Press Enter, Control D. And now the before and after you see basically change the proportions of the image. And now if I flatten it down, so I select both of them, Control E flattens them. I have a very clean uh, selective transformation without this line at the edge. And yeah, I can now work on this image and continue to apply my creative workflow. Or I could do more transformations if needed, but for this image is not needed. So that's it already. That was the very basic introduction on which you can now build. So if you follow the basic principle that the border pixels between the transform part and the static part of the image uh, may not move or may not be transformed, then you know everything you need to apply this technique also to selective perspective transformations or selective warping. And also very important, as I showed you the workflow, duplicate the layer and keep the layer beneath, then do the transformations on the upper layer and later merge it down so you don't get those uh, visual artifacts, those little lines I showed you, which in some cases can be a little bigger. So it always depends on the amount of the transformation you do. And yeah, it can be very annoying if you just begin to notice them later in the processing, which happened to me in the very beginning when I was starting with those transformations. First didn't know what to do about them and where they were coming from, but now it's very easy and yeah, I never have them in my images. Also, I want to mention that in my post-processing recipes tutorial, which is available on my homepage, I go a little bit deeper and share more tricks and tips about how to apply selective transformations uh, and also going as far as moving some elements around in the photo. So if you're interested, check this out and yeah, for now, hope you like this and yeah, see you next time. Bye.